Hey guys, what's today? Tuesday. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. All right. I'm going to wait till all the peeps file in here. Hey, Jim. Hey, Carrie. Russ just popped in here and there's Nan. Oh, Moonlight Clover. Hello. All the way out in Idaho. Hello. Hello. And Russ is coming in. Hey, guys. Snail mail for Zoe. You're back. Hello. Greetings. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're looking very stripey today, I see. We are. We are. A lot of stripes. A lot of stripes. Are these, uh, are these... I'm a polka dot person. I was going to say, stripes don't seem like your pattern, but all right, we'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. <laughs> Is this for the um, paper beads? No, this is going to be a different project. I needed something quick today. I didn't have time to um, uh, to cut out the triangle pieces of paper uh, yep. because I just got home about 10 minutes ago. So, Oh, my God. You are dedicated. <laughs> All right. Oh, is it a, was, well, it a, just, was it a good day? <laughs> I hope. It's not necessarily a good day in that my friend made it home from a very special road trip. So that, that was good. And he's in good health. So That's that, awesome. that, that was good. Uh, it's just, it was another target day today and it was just another nightmare. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like a yeah. stop and frisk at target kind of nightmare. Similar. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Police came and uh, yeah, it was <laughs> what you know, yeah, yeah. Clearly, so, I'm not going to the right Target. <laughs> you don't want to go to this Target, so um, oh my god. Well, you could because nobody's going to bother you. So um, uh, I'm very fortunate in that the manager on duty was a manager that had been in one of my previous uh, episodes mm -hmm. uh, with this particular Target, and that the cops that reported. Uh, similarly had reported uh, from the local precinct. Uh, so they knew me by, by sight and by reputation. Uh, and so they responded. So um, I didn't get arrested. I didn't get spread eagled. Uh, but the person oh, that good. lodged a complaint did. So, oh my um, God. so yeah. Yeah. So it was just a big to do. And I'm just mm. like, then I had to go to the precinct and, you know, make a statement and yada, yada, yada. And so you had a very eventful day. My gosh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh man. And I'm all sorry. I wanted was some rub offs. <laughs> Dude. Okay. I, to... I have rub on transfers. They will travel. Well, do you want me to hook you well, up? With I just, some? Yeah, no, I know. I do. I just don't know what I want yet. So that's the thing, you know, I'm trying to find, there's no dollar tree. We have, uh, some other dollar store, family dollars, what we have. Oh, nah, nah. That's not the same. That's not the same. Um, um, tell me what you're looking for in terms of rub on transfer stylistically. Maybe I can help. It's one of those things. It's one of those things I don't know until I see it kind of thing. And I just don't want to have stuff. I want to have stuff that's meaningful. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or stuff that I want to use. I don't want to have stuff just for the sake of having stuff. I will send you um, some samples. Uh, I will send you some photos of some samples, and you can tell me if you like, if any of them catch your eye. I am more than happy well, to send them. How about that? Right now, I'm looking for florals. So, okay. you know, if, if you have, you know, floral kind of things, like roses, and, yeah, you do. know, any of those, either in color or black and white. I have florals so, in color. Uh, so, um, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'll send you a picture. But you can, this you is can all pertinent. Yeah. This is all pertinent because this Friday we are going to have, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. We are going to have a Allison and Ashley themed uh, postcard challenge. Whoa. Okay. All right. So are you going to give us a hint or are we just going to have to wait with bated breath well, until Well, there are going to be special instructions. But okay. it's going to be a scrap collage, similar yes. to what you and Al, you and Ashley have done. Cool. So well, uh, this Friday is dedicated to the two of you. I've got a whole bag uh, of scrap we can use here. Good. Yeah. So uh, there are going to be some there are going to be some uh, uh, parameters, but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. 
I can get, yeah, I can definitely get on board with that. I just, Russ, I want to say a quick hello to everybody who popped in here. So I see, obviously, Ashley. And Ashley's like, what? I see mail some smiles. I see Carrie. I see love and stamps. I see Jim. I see Phil. I see Nan. Snail mail for Zoe. And um, Moonlight Clover. And I think I've, I think that's everybody so far accounted for. So good evening, everybody. All right. And Ashley is hashtag so, honored right now by that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kick, kickstart you in the butt. Um, Me? And yes, Me? you. So what I'm okay. going to do is I'm going to do the layout for these zines that you you and I. Oh, yes. And so the layout that I'm going to do is a single page folded zine that you make two major cuts and then you turn it into an accordion book. Okay. And what I want to do, uh, Landy Letters has just joined. Um, and what I want to do is I want to see the orientation of each of the individual squares. Pam has joined. Welcome, Pam. The orientation of each of the individual squares so that if I wanted to print something on my printer, like a book or text or something, I know where to place it and how what the orientation is of that text. Does okay. it make sense? Yes, it does. And just in full disclosure, I feel like I'm braying you right now. Um, I am going to be doing some more jelly printing tonight because we broke the seal on this thing yesterday and like all of my concern about doing this subsided and I'm like, ah, no problem. I got this. So I will be doing some of that. I will more than half, more than likely have to rewatch this episode um, so that I can see exactly what you are doing. Um, so just make sure you put your hands yeah. like extra close to the camera. For me. Yeah, no, don't, don't worry about that. And that's the beauty of having these on YouTube now is just that if we both become so self-involved in each of our projects, uh, we can go back and get the instructions or the, the reference references and everything like that. So absolutely. And I, I did want to shout out to both Jim and to Phil. I got your postcards today, guys. Thank you very much for those as well. Um, and book and camera just joined. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Well, so I guess there's probably not too much explanation on my end of what I need um, what I need to explain here. I'm going to do the same thing. For those of you that were here last night, I'm going to be doing some more jelly printing. I think most of you were here, so um, it shouldn't be a total shock. Um, but I will be pointing my camera down here in a second, and I'm going to start uh, making some more prints. And I actually, I'm going to be I'm going to be racing some of these stencils. So I have in my possession some Dollar Tree stencils. So they are not admittedly as, um, the, pardon the pun, seaworthy <laughs> as these that I got from Amazon. So these are like, these feel like Mylar. These feel pretty durable. Um, Do you know what brand that is? The good ones? I can find out for you. Not off the yeah. top of my head. They came from Amazon in a pack of, I want to say six. Okay. These are the six by six ones. Um, Frank has joined. Welcome, Frank. Hello. And so, so just a couple of supplies while you're doing that. This is that four inch brayer that I was telling you about. Uh, this is speed line or speed ball. Okay. Um, and so, uh, you know, and these are fairly inexpensive. You can get these anywhere. So, uh, so that's the one I was recommending for you, uh, because it covers a little bit more, more area. Yeah, so and the other I thing that you can do with it, this one, at, mine's like half the size. So I think mine's a two inch. Right. And, but the beauty of this one is you can put more than one ink. So you can do like an ombre effect <gasps> on Ooh, this one. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the beauty of having a larger surface. Now keep in mind, you don't have to use that entire surface, but it gives you a lot more uh, opportunities to do some cool things with. Cool. All right. So more options for sure. If you've got more real right. estate. And then layer. this was the other thing. This was the pressing thing I was telling you about. This is called a batten uh, by Speedball as well. And what that does is you you rub it on the surface of the paper. So it gives it better contact mm -hmm. um, uh, with with your jelly plate. So do you as a do you typically start in the center and work your way outwards on the on the paper or? I do. And you can do the same thing with like a big table, uh, teaspoon, tablespoon, you know, um, as well. It's just a, something to, to get a higher surface 
Um, yeah. Frank says you can put tape on it and use a, a huge lint roller. So it's dual the purpose. Brayer. It's dual purpose. How can you go wrong with that? You cannot go wrong with that. Cool. So um, the other thing I was going to mention was this Dollar Tree stencil. I'm going to try it out again. Pardon the pun. Don't know if it is seaworthy, um, as seaworthy as the other one, but I'll give this one a shot for one of my prints and just see how it goes. And if it's a complete nightmare, I'll just use it to uh, my kids can play with markers or something with this one. And now I have a special request for you. Okay. So one of the one of the experiments I would love for you to try is to put ink down, mm -hmm. right? Put your stencil on top. Okay. Put an another layer of ink on top like you did last night. Yep. Take the stencil off and then put another layer on those two layers and then put your paper. And then put your paper. Whoa. All right. So you're going to get, don't spoil it for me. I want to see what happens. I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. I think you're going to enjoy it. So, okay. and you can do that with a first, your first print. So you can do it with the first print or you can do it with one of those side prints that you've already done that you don't quite like the background of. Sure. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. I guess then I'm going to experiment over here with these sea creatures. So I'm going to work on two of these zines. Um, uh, excuse my uh, my tattoo arms. Uh, Allison has seen uh, the full extent of my tattoos, or at least as much of it as I'm willing to share. All good, all uh, good, but... and very impressive. Um, <laughs> I cannot imagine the amount of time that that took. Like, just... I have a just for those of you wondering, I have a, a three quarters bodysuit, so knees to shoulders, front and back, <laughs> and I have over 250 hours in the tattoo chair. Oh my god! So do they have yeah. like a punch card, like VIP or something? Uh, yes, all of mine are done by the same tattoo artist. And so, uh, we, I didn't pay for a single tattoo. He and I swapped art cool. uh, for okay. tattoos. Yeah. So my two zines are going to be made out of a, a standard eight and a half by 11, which is this blue stripe and then a 12 by 12. Okay. So, uh, okay. follow along. If you want me to narrate while I'm doing this, you can, or just want to follow along and ask questions along the way. I'll be keeping an eye on my iPad to answer any questions. Uh, You're as... getting like mega hearts on this one. So very cool. I think people are excited. I think that's for the tattoos and not for the zine. <laughs> Could be both. Hey, zines are cool too, guys. <laughs> zines are awesome. And this is one-sided paper, which is going to become important when I actually start numbering the pages so that I see where each of the pages fit within the page. So it'll make a lot more sense when I show you. Okay. My phone is now resting on a roll of tape and it is all set. <laughs> it's not moving. Good. Okay. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move my camera back a little bit. So excuse the wobbly wobbliness of this. Same. I'm just going to angle this down a bit. All right. yeah, there we go. Oh, you're getting props on your T-shirt, a T-Rex apron. Oh, that, my goodness. Oh, it is an apron, isn't it? It is an apron. And um, I, uh, you know, in tr true to form, I came dressed in my crafting sweatshirt, which is my favorite outer layer when I'm chilly at night. So um, I've got that. And I have, uh, I stole my kid's apron because I do not own an adult-sized apron. I just realized it's just kid-sized stuff. So... Ashley is asking, how many aprons do you actually have? Like, I have I have two child-sized ones that are, like, the full length. And I have one rooster apron, but it only is a waist apron. So it wouldn't really uh, protect my sweatshirt, my Lucky Crafting sweatshirt. So, yeah, I only have a couple. 
I'm just trying to keep it interesting because I know I wore a Halloween last night. So I thought, well, maybe I will wear the T-Rex one tonight. It reminds me of that um, hairspray song uh, where they ask, uh, how many t- how many sweaters do you have? And she goes, <laughs> I have three. And she goes, oh, no, 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 I have 20 <laughs> to impress all the girls on the Corny Collins show. Anyway. <laughs> Theater nerd. Have not seen that show in Oh, you have years? not seen Hairspray? Oh like, my god. Literally years. Okay. Years. It has been a long time. I saw that show on Broadway 27 times. Oh my god. Um, it was down the street from where I was working my day job at the time. Um, and whenever I was in a bad mood, um, I would go there and watch that show because you couldn't finish watching that show without leaving with a smile on your face. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, that was my happy go-to show. Sweet. And if you're in the industry, then they kind of look sideways and let you in for free or, you know, let you do standing room only for $10 or whatever the case may be. So it's not a bad um, deal at all. Yeah. Very cool. No. So I have folded my page in half twice in both directions. So once right there and then once again to the center seam that way. And then I did it the same on this way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two relief cuts. You're going to cut from the bottom three quarters all the way uh, on the on the longer end. And then you're going to do the same from the top down. And then so you're going to make three cuts. Okay, so um, <laughs> I have my base layer on my jelly plate, and I put the okay. stencil on it. And right. Then I put the blue on top of the it's stencil. It's a pretty blue. What color is that blue? The official name, and this is again, this is Apple Barrel. So um, Bimini Blue is the name of this paint. Okay, that's a cool like, blue. It's almost like yeah. a Tiffany blue, at least in my computer screen. It's it, it kind of, yeah. And um, I don't know, it kind of caught my eye. It had, It's almost semi-aquatic looking, so yeah. And you are under the sea. Huh? I know. <laughs> so now I have the, do I pull the stencil off and then you it over all this? That's correct. Okay. Now keep in mind you're working in reverse. Right, so the very bottom layer against the jelly plate Ooh. is the color that's going to be on top. The blue color is going to be the second color, and then whatever you put on top of your blue color after you take off the stencil is going to be the base layer. So you're working in reverse. Okay. So do I put? So you paint? want to pick something that's going to be cool against those colors. Cool. Like this. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. Uh, green. All right. And I'm going to do this off camera here on my piece of plexiglass. I do that. Oh, what an adventure this is. All right, and then I'm just going to go I'm going to go across the entire jelly plate and cover that. Correct. Okay. I think I got it. And this Now the thing is... to keep in mind is when you're cho- choosing to uh when you're choosing to uh, pick a jelly plate, you always want to get a sheet of paper that's larger than the size of your jelly plate so that you can cut it down. Because the problem is if you put a, a sheet that's too small, it's hard to get off of the, the, uh, the jelly plate. So you want so it to really overlap. Exactly. Ah. Exactly. See, Ashley, this is why, or no, who, I was, who was I telling this to? Pam, this is why I need the three and a half by five inch little jelly plate. This is why. Right, because then what you could do is you could you could take a five by seven piece of paper. Yes. And it will cover it will cover that entire jelly plate. So then you can trim it to the exact size and image that you want. Yep. I hear you. No, that makes perfect sense. That seems very logical. 
Makes good sense. Frank, you're absolutely right. T Rex would not be great at cap at crafting because his arms are too short. I don't think T Rex would know how to use the ink brayer very well. <laughs> Just saying. Well, he would definitely have a dim limited reach. So um, yeah, we'd have like really narrow, small prints coming from T Rex if he were to use the brayer. But he couldn't even bend down to do the paper because his head be too big. This is true. I feel like this is something I'm going to ruminate on later. <laughs> For now, though. All right, so I've covered everything, and this color is okay. called bright green. And, yeah, it's a pretty cool color, I would say. I think those colors are going to look great together, by the way. All right, and this – can I show you guys something? I put this piece of paper underneath my jelly plate last night, and look at all the mineral oil that soaked into the paper. So um, – I didn't do that tonight. I just took the plastic layer off the top and I left the plastic underneath. So I'm gonna get an actual fresh sheet of paper to lay this down. That's a great suggestion, Ashley. Uh, T-Rex could knit. <laughs> Actually, yes. It'd be a shoe in for that. That is one skill that I've tried over and over and over again and still can't get. As I many feel times that as way I've about tried crochet. to knit. I can't crochet to save my life. I don't understand. It doesn't work. Like there's something wrong with the yarn. It doesn't work. I can't do it. I can knit I try to do, poorly. <laughs> yeah, I try to do macrame. I want to do one of those macrame of uh, uh, plant holders. You know, all that kind of stuff from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to do a vest, you know, the macrame vest. You know, you could wear bare-chested. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all those things. Because <laughs> you got you know, you to show off the tattoos. Once you got them, you got to show them. And just like that, the art throwdown took an interesting turn. <laughs> well, why don't, Russ, why don't you work on making one of those... Um, paper vests that we saw. Remember the one that I showed you guys? Ooh. Well, this one's really slow. Okay. I can't see any of my sea creatures. <laughs> Look. They're gone. What happened? Are you guys seeing this? Yeah, what happened to them? My sea creatures disappeared. I don't know. I think I have to do this one over again. I mean, it's not a terrible print. It's kind of cool. It's got like this little red fadey part in the background from an old um, old leftover paint. I don't mind the colors. They're cool. Um, yeah, Nemo is not even... Nemo just freaking exited the building here. Okay, I'm going to do I'm, this again. <laughs> I'm wondering if you needed a stronger color for for the green i have a darker no, for the uh green. for the actual uh stencil so uh, i'm wondering if you need a, a, a stronger middle color maybe um so it would have been i did white and then i stuck the stencil down and then i did the bimini blue and then i did the green over the top hmm so how about we do this? How about you put the stencil down on the plate first and then do a color on top of the stencil, which would, which is what would make the colors of the animals, of the fish, and then do a color on top of that, which without the stencil, which would be the background color. Does that make sense? So I put the stencil down and then I go on top of that? Correct. Okay. Okay. Which should then mean that the color, what, whatever the color you're going to use for that mm -hmm. is going to be the color of the fish. Okay, so I'm going to go with this blue again. I'm going to try it. Yeah, that was mysterious. I'm like, I have no idea what just happened. All right. Because when you lift off the stencil, what should be left behind should be the fish in that color. Yeah. In theory. Yeah, I'd say that one was not worth the price of admission. Man, okay, I'm going to do this again. <laughs> Doing this again. All right, so going back to my blue, Benimini blue. Drowsy's joined. Welcome, Drowsy. We are experimenting with projects tonight. <laughs> Very experimental, I will add.
Okay, so I've made these relief cuts. So once again, one from the bottom going three and three quarters of the way up, one in the other direction going three and three quarters of the way down, and then one in the first direction going three and three quarter ways up. Which is why it's great to have these grids so that you can see exactly where your pages are and what three quarters is. And then it's a matter of just folding these pages into a little book. Now, does this, does your technique, Russ, require any stitching? No. It's, it's only folding. Only folding. Hmm. But there is a stitch option, but it's not necessary. See, and this is your zine, right? And then you can, you can flip each of the pages. Oh, wow. Like a book. So whatever color you had on the facing up is going to be the, the color of the interior pages of your book. So then what I'm going to do is take something that is an opposing color. Let's just do bright blue. So this would be the front, if I can get the pen to work. Do I, am I supposed to pull my stencil up, Russ? Yes. Okay. So, and what's left behind should be those animals in blue against a clear plate. Yes, mostly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to apply a new color over all of that, and that should be the background color uh, of your page. All right, I'm going to go back to my green. Let's see if we can get this to work. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome. Uh, Jennifer, we are doing jelly plate printing again for Allison, and I am doing a prototype of a zine made from a single piece of paper. Um, and then showing the dimensions and showing how it folds. And right now, I am trying to get a pen to work. What type of pen is that that you're using? There? This is a little Jelly Roll pen. Jelly Roll. Is it really? Is it really that brand? It is. <laughs> Jelly roll. This is a pilot jelly roll. I'm a fan of jelly roll pens. They work very well. I like them. They have purposes, but I just don't like the smear factor. Mm, um, true. You just have to be really, yeah. You have God to be forbid really you're left handed. Don't be left handed and use yeah. those. <laughs> just like <saying>. Ashley. <laughs> the struggle. I am making a series of left-handed books. Books for left-handed people. Nice. Yeah. Now, you are right-handed, though, or are you ambidextrous? I am right-handed. Ah, okay. I am definitely right-handed. Okay, I think I've got enough paint on this guy. Moment of truth. I'm gonna go get my paper here. New fresh sheet of paper. Just gonna see what this does. And if this works, which it should in theory, you can do the same thing and print that image on that one that didn't work mm -hmm. and all the fish should show up. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. 
kind of nervous here. No pressure, no pressure. Let's lift it up and see. Kind of worked. Oh. <laughs> kind of. Still, I, you know, regardless that this is, these are always an experiment and I kind of like how random these are. You just don't know how they're going to turn out, but I do like the way this print turned out with the splotches of green and blue and it, it's kind of earthy looking. I kind of like this. All right. Well, we'll carry That's on. So do some interesting. More. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm not sure if it's like a paint quality thing. Like this is admittedly not the most high quality of paint. Um, it could be a stencil thing. But I'm wondering if it's thing. a stencil thing. It might just I'm be because my stencil If the stencil's not thick enough. <laughs> Maybe. I wonder if the stencil's not thick enough to give you dimension to the paint that you're putting on it. Want to do more of these? What do you think? Should I do this one, guys? Mermaid or fish scales? Maybe we'll try this. What I was gonna, why don't you just try that one first with just one layer of ink. Take the stencil Take the, I don't, huh. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. It is. Because yeah. if you take the stencil off and leave the, the scallops behind on your jelly plate, that should lift and put it on whatever it is that you put behind it. You know, so take one of those other backgrounds that didn't work. Take one of the, oh, okay, so take one of the other pages that didn't work. I can go back to my original. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go back to this original here, so. Yeah. This one. Just whip some of my ink off of here. Okay, what are we Googling? Somebody's Googling something. <laughs> Nothing. Ashley says maybe if you have stronger colors, they may show up a little bit better. True. Um, I have like a bright yellow. Maybe that would. Um, got bright yellow here. Um, it's worth a shot. I can try it. <laughs> they're laughing about my O. I don't know what O I said or what how I said it, but they're laughing at me for saying it the way I did. So <laughs> I have to I have to go to, to the replay to see that. <laughs> all right this yellow is loud i'm gonna use it <laughs> some convincing happens. from the cheap seats according to frank <laughs> or the cheap acrylics look at this guy i got this from the dollar tree i'll be so excited if this works <laughs> oh zoe has an interesting comment she says gel prints uh is temporary and dry time sensitive maybe i was was i talking too much Maybe, perhaps. No, maybe, or or maybe, uh, yeah, who knows? Hmm. Because I noticed um, the acrylic dries a lot faster than I thought it would. Yeah, and Frank is, is on to something as well. He says from his letterpress days that, that you have to fill the thickness of the template. So if your template is too thin, it may not build up enough surface to mm. transfer. So maybe I'm not putting enough ink down. I got to make it thicker. Well, I'll try it. Or maybe even do direct to the plate inking like, like some of the videos. Hmm. Well, I'm going to stubbornly try to do this on the stencil and yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's see what happens guys. But that's what it is. I mean, this is all experiment. And just kudos to you for building. Because I know you're working out of your comfort zone because you're very similar to me in that you want to be able to demonstrate something that works. I'm a perfectionist, so that, man, when it comes to this stuff. I, yeah. I am. I, I admit that. So, <laughs> so yeah. So it's just, you know, props to you for willing to uh, fail splendidly. <laughs> well, and, and you know, sometimes these are, like, as Bob Ross used to say, sometimes these are happy mistakes. So, exactly. So that one said that last night. Absolutely. You just never know what's going to But it's all about here. technique. And once you figure out the technique, then it's all downhill from there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yay. Okay. So it kind of worked. Like it's, 
it didn't go down perfectly onto the paper, but like you can still kind of see it's got a pattern going on. Well, you can see the pattern. So yeah, yes, I think that's that's a great. Um, it's not terrible. Yeah, and I think in the bottom uh, bottom right hand corner, your bottom right hand corner, down there, I think that's where we're paying. No, the other way. That way. Yep. Is that your right or your left? This is my left. Okay, your left. Okay. I think it may have gotten underneath the stencil, which is always the problem about putting yes. ink on top of the stencil. Yes. And I noticed my stencil shifted ever so slightly as I was brayering. So I was trying to hold it in place while I brayered, right. but um, it kind of did its thing. So, you know, I would I use this in, um, you know, on an envelope or on a background of something? Absolutely. Absolutely. Ab you're absolutely totally right. Totally usable. Yeah. So I think I'm going to get my purple ink out now that I'm inspired by this. I'm going to go with my Concord grape color purple and I am going to, let's see. Now, did we, did we ever figure out how to clean your jelly plates? Um, I was, I just left the paint on it and then I tried to blot it with some paper and lift it off that way. Okay. Is that a sound Because I'd be interested technique? to see, because... Well, because remember how in the very first print that you did, you had some of the red left over from last night? Yes. So I'm wondering if there's any way to truly clear your uh, jelly plate. And one of the things that they do tell you, uh, for those of you uh, new to this, um, that you want to cover your jelly plate overnight. You never leave it exposed to the elements because it will dry out. Yes. And so um, the, actually the bottom of it, you guys can't see it, but it's got a clear piece of plastic adhered to the bottom. So I took that off last night when I was messing with it. And then I'm like, there was no reason for me to take that bottom part off. So I guess right. hopefully that'll help try to preserve it as well. Yeah, so this stuff is stuck on here. So once I put some more wet acrylics on, it'll probably just reconstitute. But this feels dry-ish, this green around the edges, but... That's okay. That's okay. We can live with that. Allison is originally from New York. Uh, <laughs> Carrie's asking where your accent is from. You don't sound like Massachusetts. <laughs> who's asking? <laughs> yeah, who's asking? <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm from originally from northern New York State, so I often get a lot of... Um, uh, they're like, are you from the Dakotas? Are you from Canada? Where are you from? And nope, I am just from Northern New York State. <laughs> Not I can Boston. definitely hear the Canadian. Yeah, I can definitely hear the Canadian though. I can yes. get that one. Yes. So uh, while you're preparing, so this is a little book, and so if I, and the reason why I have the front designated because if I wanted to do, do a cover, I would attach the cover to this front, so I wouldn't be able to use that particular page. That is so cute. Uh, Carrie says she was thinking Michigan. Mailable. Yeah, Michigan. <laughs> And so I've numbered the pages so that when I open this back up and lay it out in its original configuration, you can see how the pages fit. So you're going to have four sheets that are the right orientation, four sheets that are in the reverse or upside down. So you want to keep, keep that in mind when you're printing. And then the pattern repeats itself. And then on the back of number one, and I'm assuming on the back of number 16, are your front and back pages. So you don't want to put anything here if you're going to attach a cover. Now what some people do is they will print out everything um, this way, uh, keeping in mind that these are um, the keeping the dimensions of these this is eight and a half by 11. Now I'm going to show you the beauty of working on a 12 by 12 in just a second. Um, so then you can just either print them out on the actual page that you're going to use, or you can actually uh, stamp or do design the page that you have or you want, just keeping in mind that the opposite numbers are going to be upside down. That's what you want to keep in mind when you're laying it all out. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the 12 by 12.
So, yes, Jennifer, the, it, it, one of the names for that particular book structure is called a zigzag accordion. Ah. Uh, Zoe's asking, what does one do with the scene? I love that now, question. I guess you do... <laughs> yeah. um, one of the things is that you can turn it into a book that you send. You can do a short run of them because they're so easy to make. Uh, and you can do a limited run of them and do a book. Uh, I did one that was the uh, oh look at the court color coordination on the screen between you the two of us oh my gosh yeah <laughs> um if i can find it real quickly i i did one when i first moved to new york i didn't i was in a railroad department uh with someone and the other person didn't want to decorate for christmas so i had to work with things that i could put in my room and so i did one of these little accordion zigzag accordion books and did the 12 days of christmas on it and i also did one uh with uh, just holiday images that said um merry christmas on it so the idea was and then what you could do is you can open it up uh and put it across you know whatever it is can so, i ask a question sure what is a railroad apartment i've never heard that term before well railroad apartments is a long it's longer than it is wider. Uh -huh. So the idea is that all the rooms are connected to each other. So you have bedroom two, which is usually on the street, connected to bedroom one, connected to a usually a foyer of some sort, connected to the kitchen. And so you have two entrances. You have one that goes directly into bedroom number two, and you have one oh. entrance that goes directly into the kitchen. Uh, and it's an old tenement. I like that background. Yes. Uh, so it's an old tenement style of uh, apartment. Gotcha. Interesting. Uh, uh, Ashley calls it a, a shotgun apartment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that the southern term for it? Shotgun. I like it. Oh, and just for the record, no. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, shit. Hang on one second. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, sorry. So, uh, uh, no, my, my thing's getting, uh, for the first time ever, my phone went down to 20% battery. Um, anyways, oh. uh, I just want to point out, um, Tangelo is back. Hey, it's Tangelo here. Look at this. Tangelo. Tangelo's back. All right. <laughs> Make another background, I think. <laughs> like, I think I need to go lie down. Tangelo's back. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, actually, it dropped for a second. It has never done that before to me. So um, it must be because I my phone was only like 50% battery-ish when I started because I realized far too late that I needed to charge up. Landy says it sounds like a hot Italian guy name. Tangelo. Tangelo. Tangelo reminds me of like a roast beef store that you would find here in the greater Boston area. Like, let's go to Tangelo's for some roast beef sandwich because i guess that's what you do up here is you go eat at the roast beef restaurants which for the record i have never been to one before <laughs> so here's my little christmas book it's from the very first christmas here <gasps> in uh new york city that is so, so cute so it has happy holidays oh my goodness right well, maybe. Okay, there we go. And then on the back, so depending upon which orientation I had it, on the back, I had all these little cute little images. Awesome. I like the wreath. That's awesome. Yeah. And so um, I think it was Carrie. So the idea is that you can put this in an, um, not this one this thick, but with a regular one-sheet zine, you could put it in an envelope and you know mail it very easily uh, with the regular first rate postage. So and people uh, trade that's the beauty them of these little zines. Collect them, yeah. and actually at one time, um, and I think this was done in, in concert with Harvard University. There used to be a zine library in downtown Boston um, near Harvard, but 
I think it closed. I, I think they relocated whatever the original storefront was that they were borrowing space from. So I don't know that it is still there, but it used to be a thing here in Boston. And I did visit it once about, this was probably about eight years ago, but it was cool, super cool. And you had zine. I mean, they treated it like a regular library. You had zines from all different authors on, my God, you name the topic, there was a zine on it. It was a beautiful thing. And folks, just um, just because uh, I, this has never happened before, if my phone does happen to cut out, um, I may disappear for a second, but it will just be telling me that I'm down to 10%. <laughs> so. Next time I will absolutely make sure that I come in with a full charge. So if we cut out early, it's nothing personal. It's the curse of Tangelo. Wow, that's pressure. Don't talk about Tangelo. Tangelo will curse you. Oh, you guys, look at this one. Okay. This looks like the surface of a planet or something. This is cool. Look at this. Oh, I like that one. This one turned out really funky. I like this background. Yeah, it's like, it's an adventure. You really don't know how exactly these are going to look. So it's kind of like a mini surprise each time. And there's still, it reconstituted some of the green. So you've got a little bit of splotch here and there very faintly of the green too, which I don't mind. It makes it look interesting, gives it character. So Ashley says, we'll overlook this one time, but be better prepared next time. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I may have added that last part though. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I, the subtext was there. <laughs> Note in the subtext, I know, I know. A Martian Sunrise or Disco Inferno. So these are all names for that last background. I was like, are those users that just popped in here? Because they've got some pretty yeah. cool usernames. Dante's Inferno was another one. So um, so this is the 12 by 12. And the beauty of working a 12 by 12 is that you know each one of these are going to be a very specific size. So each one of these are going to be a three by three square. So you can plan your uh, text or your image based upon a given unit. Uh, and so it's easy to do an outlay. Ashley's busting me out. She says I embellished her comments. It's like, he's embellishing. Oh, I gotta show you guys something real quick here before I forget. Let me see if I can reach it on my table here. Remember that explosion card that Love and Stamps made for me and very kindly sent to me. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Um, so this is, uh, it says, uh, best wishes. And I haven't finished the inside yet, but if you um, look at the outside, I'll try to do some light here. Um, there's, a, there's a layer of glitterific on here. So there's some sparkles, maybe not able to see that on the camera, but um, I've got all the little cells filled out. So I'm gonna put some stickers and some cool things on the inside of this. So anyway, I That's just wanted amazing. to That's amazing, that turned out so well. Yeah, I'm super happy with it. So it's got a floral. What's the, can you show us the back? It's blank. I didn't okay. put anything are, there yet, but. Um, are you planning on, on doing something there? Yeah, I'm halfway done. <laughs> yeah, are you going to do the interiors of those as well or just do the back? I was thinking of doing the interiors of these as yeah. well. So I have, I have cool. extra triangles. I'm like, I've got triangles. We'll travel. I might as well use them, right? Yeah. So, and then I've got like, I like this big diamond. Well, that diamond, here. that's a huge diamond. So you could do something really special with that. So, yeah, it's kind of the focal point of the back of the right. piece. So I'm not really sure. I'm like, well, maybe this will be the front of the card. But then I'm like, yeah, but if you turn it over, this could also be the front. So <laughs> anyway, that is uh, just a quick progress update. That's where I'm at with that. That one I've been working at a bit at a time. So, so far it's been pretty fun. So thank you, June, for sending this. I love it. June, do you, do you have a title for that type of um, uh, card structure? Let us know. I, originally, I called it a butterfly card. And then I'm like, right. I don't think that's right. I think it's called an explosion card. 
I believe. So J- Jennifer asked me if I had gone, if I knew about this PS1 zine uh, gathering that happens in the fall each year in New York City. I haven't. I've heard of it. Um, I just never gotten the gumption to go, to be quite honest with you. And you know, it's funny, one of my sheets that I was using last night as my um, ink roll-off sheet, I don't know what, what that term is called, but just to remove the ink from the brayer, I got kind of a Christmassy pattern. Look at this. So I was planning on using this as part of my holiday mailings. So, yeah. June says she thinks it's called an explosion cart. So if you want to okay. research that on YouTube, uh, you may want to try those terms first. Excellent. Excellent. And so this is the second zine. Uh, so that you can see, you know, because it's three by three square, you could do this with um, one of those. I think that's about the size of those little mini, mini, um, uh, oh, uh, Polaroids. Uh, how do you like that? That little, uh, what's I, it called now? I, the HP. Sprocket. Sprocket. I have used that yeah. thing so much for my smash booking. Like, in, yeah. in for, uh, we made, I, okay, there was a funny picture of me uh, when my sister and I visited Disney back in February. Um, and I'm actually wearing this black sweatshirt and I have the hood up and I look like a total creeper. It's awesome. And so um, I photobombed one of her pictures that she was trying to take of like some lit up scenery. It was nighttime in Pandora. So she took the picture and I'm like, I'm there. And it looks really funny. So I actually, my family, it's become a running gag. So I took that photo and I printed it out and I mounted it because it has the, they're technically stickers, the sprocket paper. So I just peeled off the backing and then I got one of those big magnet sheets and I slapped it on there on the adhesive. So it was like double adhered. And then I cut it, and now my mom and my sister both have that creeper picture of me. Um, so I've been doing all sorts of stuff with it. Um, sometimes when cool. I send a postcard, I print out a picture, and I slap it on the back of the postcard if I want to show somebody something. So, um, yeah, lots of uses That's for cool. that sprocket. I, I will say, it's so far it's been a, a pretty trustworthy product. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. I just wish the, the uh, pages weren't so expensive. Yeah, I mean, the the sprocket itself, I got a good deal um, off right. of Amazon Warehouse. Um, I'm like, why would I buy retail? I don't know for sure if I, you know, if I'm going to totally commit to this product. Or, right. You know, so it was good as an experiment. It wasn't bad. Oh, good. I'm glad I didn't steer you wrong. Show somebody something, Allison, says Landy. Gosh, um, what would you like to see project-wise? Oh, I'm wondering if she's asking about to see uh, one of the sprocket images, maybe. I don't know that I have. Yeah, I don't any know. Down here we have about uh, six minutes left. Okay. So. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I will. Um, I will. Landy, make a note to bring my uh, some of my sprocket pictures down uh, from my office next time. And then I can show you guys. Yes, all right. So it was the sprocket pictures. I will show you. And I've got my trusty notebook here from Pam, so I'm using that. All right, so HP sprocket pics. Oh, I've got one. Oh, perfect. Yeah. They just wanted to see my, my creeper picture from Disney. I know you guys. I okay. know you. So this is the image. This is the sprocket uh, page. Uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, sticker. Uh, so you just print off the backing and just adhere it to whatever it is. That is my friend's dog, Clark. I love his haircut. He's just so majestic looking. He is a uh, show dog. He is a uh, Portuguese water dog. Beautiful. Beautiful. So... Uh, just to fill you in, today I went to Target and I was shopping and another elderly patron started following me in the store. What? What? And so I was with my basket and I was just, uh, was just um, 
shopping and putting things in my cart. And, uh, and I noticed, you know, after like 15 minutes that she was still following me. So I said, ma'am, is there a problem? Why are you following me? And she said, I want to make sure that you're not going to steal something. What? Yeah. What? What is so, it with uh, that target? Why are people so in your business? That's so weird. So, uh, so I continued my shopping and after another 10 minutes, I had enough of, so I went to the manager, uh, who I had met before, uh, on a different incident and complained to him that this woman was harassing me and she was following me. Um, and so, um, so she, he talked to her and said that she couldn't continue to follow me throughout the store. That either she needed to finish up her shopping right. and leave, uh, or she was going to call the police. Uh, he was going to call the police. And so she said, you can't kick me out. I'm just, you know, doing my constitutional duty and right as a citizen. What? So what is he, wrong yeah. with people at this yeah. target? So, so he immediately oh. to his, you know, to his credit, immediately on his cell called the police station and said, we have an incident. Could you please send officers? Um, and so, uh, they were there within five minutes and, uh, they saw me, they saw the manager, uh, they talked with the old lady and said, uh, ma'am, you're going to have to leave. And she goes, no, I'm not leaving. I have a constitutional right to be here. So, uh, they How old was escorted this her out. When you said old she lady. was like 72, somewhere around there. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so that's. Yeah, that was my my day. And when I got to the police station, it was kind of funny uh, because one of the other officers was there and goes, you again? <laughs> you know, you're starting to get a reputation around here. I said, I know what's going on. So we had a good <laughs> laugh about it, you know, and it's, it's just like, you know, you know, so uh, he says, you know, you're unmistakable. That's, you know, that's why we know we can recognize you. But uh, yeah, and it just so happened I had short sleeves on, all the tattoos were flashing and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but, you know, he, uh, they were, they, were, they treated me very very nicely and they apologize on her behalf um and so i think here in new york a lot of that is is on people's minds right now with what happened in central park uh with that lady in central park and the dog so um so they, they bent over backwards to be nice to me about it and so um uh you know and the sad thing is that this is the only target in the area that i can walk to uh. there are other targets but i either have to go into the city you know um versus targeted at target according to frank uh, so, you know, it, it does benefit me to go to this particular, we have this one particular mall that's within walking distance from my apartment, uh, which is why I tend to go there. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's just, so, so that, that was my day. Carrie's got a solution. So I needed everyone's, I needed everyone's support today in the craft hour. So thank you very much yeah. for being here for us. So we have about a minute left. And so, okay. Does anybody uh, have so a that, cricket machine? That was machine. my day. So somebody needs to get a cricket machine that makes uh, something that says uh, a t-shirt that says I'm a nice, whoops. Ah, okay. Sorry, I'm at ten percent battery. A cricket machine that says I'm a T-shirt nice what? a nice I'm a nice guy. Just ask me. We need a cricket machine. Who or, has a cricket machine? Or, or that can don't do a judge transfer? me because of my tattoos. How about that one? Something, something like something to yeah. I, I don't know something to make like like disarm these people. I don't understand why they're targeting you. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, Love and June says, "Take a cone with me next time." Okay, that yeah, that's really going to work, right? Uh, Put yeah, a baby carrier man on talking, the front and stick him in there. Talking, yeah, talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a slippery slope to beanie but, babies, yeah. man. Yeah. Slippery slope. Yeah. But uh, you know, as as we always say, you know, uh, thank you for off here any second now. But thank you for joining us. It's it's you know, it's a great part of the day. And Russ, your uh, and bandwidth like today is horrible. When we need each other, uh, it's your people nice to know that upstairs are what? sucking up your bandwidth. Your bandwidth, it's coming in and out. It's not me. Well, I think it's yours. No, it's not me. It's you. It's yours. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> but thank you for coming. We know you thank have choices you. where to be. Uh, we, do, we do enjoy your company. And uh, we do enjoy this hour that we can get to spend together. So uh, whatever goes on the rest of the day, we know that we have this hour with each other. So thank you guys. And thank you for putting up with all of my uh, jelly printing adventures, my jelly roll. So these are from last night. Hey, look at these. And um, here's some more. Now I'm just going to show everybody. Oh, it's done. <laughs> 